Hello, we're back with the Jacksonville History Show, and I'm Emily Rutherford Liska, and I'm here with Joe Ab Overby. And Joe, welcome to the Jacksonville History Show. Thank you very much. I watch it all the time. I'm I'm pleased you're our big viewer then, mm -hmm. and uh, and we have others. People yeah. mention this show to me all the time, and I'm sure people will be watching you. And a lot of people already know you're a local author of note, and your most recent book is Acres of way and and or maybe it's not your most recent maybe I have it them is. flip it is indeed it acres is, yeah. away and this is the story of the woman of a woman named Elizabeth Stark and it is her story and the history of how we really got Mayport naval base where it is today and tell us a little bit about uh, uh, your your journey in writing this book uh, <clears throat> well, I wrote the first book, uh, Just a Dumb Kid from Nowhere. It was a nice book, but I was going to follow up on it, and uh, I started to bring Miss Stark in on it, and I thought to myself, you know, this is a history book right here. Now, tell everybody how you met Elizabeth Stark. Well, I was uh, a young Navy brat. I went in the Navy at the age of 14. Amazing in itself. Amazing. There's our story. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I came to Mayport as a skipper of a tugboat. And uh, I, I was uh, had a mobile home. And this is in 1956, as I Nin recall. Earth, 1956, and the naval base was practically closed at Mayport. Uh, After it had been very active during WW2 and following that period. Right, yes. very active. They, it yes. was still open, but it just had a few guards out there. Sure. So I got stationed there on this tug, and uh, uh, there was no mobile home parks here at there was a couple at the beach, but none in Mayport. And I was looking for a place to park my mobile home. It's a young fella, real young, and uh, me and my wife just got married. No kids. So uh, a guy told me, he said, won't you go out and see Mrs. Stark? He said, she used to own the naval base, and she'll rent you a spot out there. Well, I went out to see her, and uh, she did. She rented me her backyard. And her and I got along so good, she was in her uh, late 70s then, I would suppose. So uh, I knew her, I knew her maid, and I knew her driver. She was a very wealthy lady and was a cousin to the Roosevelts. And so that's how I met her, and uh, it, I lived there for a period of seven years. And we're going to actually show an image of Mrs. Stark, and she was quite now this is early this is before she even came to Jacksonville because I understand she came to Jacksonville about 1940 or the beaches area of Jackson. 1914 1914 excuse me and then and this image is taken in actually 1903 I believe it says but yes 1903 so uh, she lived a long life a very long life mm -hmm. but there she is quite a sport and I understand very wealthy educated in Europe uh, and, and you tell me a little bit about her background. Tell me about her background. Uh, well, her her two brothers fought on San Juan Hill with uh, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Sure. And uh, as I said before, they were cousins to the Roosevelt. And uh, <clears throat> when he got elected president, uh, her brothers were ambassadors for him. So she was a, a young lady in her teens, and she traveled all over the world with her oldest brother, Hoffman was his name, Hoffman uh, Phillips. And uh, so she went two years in uh, Japan. He was an ambassador over in Morocco or somewhere in there. A very connected family. Right. And uh, so uh, she was uh, known as a woman's liver, though. She was, mm -hmm. she ran around with uh, uh, Alice Roosevelt. And if you read the history on her, she was kind of a... Well, as, they, as Ms. Sark said, she was a high stepper. I believe, I believe she was the one that Teddy said he could control just about everything in his life but Alice. I oh, think that, that President Roosevelt, I think, said that. Yeah. Now, so you have you have Mrs. Stark. You've met Mrs. Stark in the in the mid to late fifties, and you find out that she at one time owned all the property where. Uh, Mayport Naval Air Station is located. So tell a little bit about that story and how that exchange took place. Well, that's Not quite easily, a story. I understand. I, as I got to know her, we just kind of fell in love with each other and uh, her being a woman's liver and me being a kind of a young radical type young man, 
uh, we hit it off pretty good, pretty good t together there. And uh, <clears throat> she had her maid, and she had her uh, driver that would would all have tea in the late afternoon out by Lake Elizabeth. And she would call me over, you hoo, you hoo. She had that voice, you know, had a little bell she'd ring. And she was up in her late 70s or early 80s then, and tea time, and we'd come down and have tea. And she would start telling me about her life. How now, they I want, yes, and I want to stop you on the tea story uh -huh. because she made the tea the strangest way. It was made from what? Uh, it was Some made sort from of the leaves of a tree. Uh, I forget the name of the tree, but uh, it's in the book, with, uh, uh, like a holly tree. A holly tree, that's what I remember reading. And mm -hmm. you said it was very strong, a real caffeine kick from this. Oh, it had a kick and, to it. And so anyway, so you would go over to tea, and then on these visits you found out how the naval base was actually placed on her property. And she didn't like to talk about that, but her maid did. Okay. Now that's how I, she would, uh, after I knew her for about five years, she started breaking down and telling me the whole thing. And, <clears throat> but her maid, I asked her, the maid if it's true, and she said, yeah, I was there. And said uh, when they come in and took the base, they, uh, there was uh, six Marines that came in, and she was in a, in a, a rocker, rocking chair up in her uh, upstairs and I think you have a picture and of that And I am, house. I'm going to put an image up of this while you tell about it. So she's in this house, upstairs. her home, on the ocean. Mm -hmm. Looking right out into the ocean. Where Mayport Naval Air Station mm -hmm. is today and the Marines come in to take her out and she pulls out some weaponry, doesn't well, she? Well, she had a 38 <laughs> pistol <laughs> and uh, it belonged to her husband but uh, she fought him off. First oh with this water and everything, but you know the Marines don't give up. Bless the Marines, they they. It's kind of a bad story mm -hmm. for them, but uh, they had to protect the government's property. Sure, you know. Sure. So uh, if we didn't have the intimate domain, we wouldn't have anything today. So uh, they picked her up, and but they tied her in the chair because they, the maid said because they didn't want her to fall out. Right. Right. And uh, they carried her downstairs and put her in her. Uh, uh, Packard. She had a very large Packard, and her her uh, sh chauffeur drove her off to the beach, and she spent one night down there. And and so and she was quite quite a feisty lady, as anybody listening oh, to the story would know. The, the old ladies, yeah. there's very few that know her down there now. Uh, but I meet some occasionally that still remember her. And we have an image of her up now. So at the point that you met Mrs. Stark, she was, she had started, uh, had a little piece of property and it was called Wonderwood and that is where you put your mobile home. In, in her backyard. In her backyard. Now, now tell us, go ahead and tell us a little bit about the book. And I'm going to put it up right now, sadly. Uh, in your book, Acres Away, it not only tells Mrs. Stark's story, but it also tells a little history of the Mayport Naval Base. So, and, and tell a little bit about that. Well, when I came there, the uh, first time I came to Mayport was in 1947. <clears throat> I was on a destroyer that come down the coast and we had some engine problems and we broke mm -hmm. down, so we pulled into Mayport. Never heard of Mayport before. Uh, yeah. But anyways, well, that's the first time I was here. Then I came back in the early part of 56, mm -hmm. and I believe they had 67 people on the base. They didn't have a commanding officer. They Just. had a lieutenant commander, which they called an officer in charge. My goodness. And uh, so I was told, uh, being a young young man, like I said, went in the Navy at very young, I didn't pay any attention to politics or anything, you know, and everything was just rolling along. And I heard some of the older people say, boy, they're going to make a big base out of this. They're going to bring these carriers in here, and there was nothing out there. The, the base was pretty well built up, though. They had that harbor dredge. And I just want to go back and add, when Mrs. Stark was carried out of her house, on the ocean in that chair, tied to the chair so the Navy base could, uh, <laughs> could be uh, installed there. Mm -hmm. It was 1939, right before World War II broke out. Well, a few good years before. 39 World. or 40, About somewhere. Th yeah. So, you know, the nation was gearing up 
uh, in for a defense World, mode, yeah, mm -hmm. for what became World War II. Yeah, it's not as bad yeah. as, as, as we, and some people may think we just took the property. They paid her $38,000. $38,000. So which, she told me. Which she considered was about $2 million two short. Million, she was offered $2 million for <laughs> Now, let, we have only about two minutes left. So tell me uh, any history you'd like, and we can hone in on a close-up of your book at the time in, this, in Acres Away. Uh, give us just a little glimpse of where the Navy base is today. How many people are out there today, uh, Joe? Uh, well, I've, I've kind of lost contact yes, with the Navy. Right, I mean, today. I'm, uh, I spend years and years. Uh, it, we had at one time, now a lot of people in Jacksonville probably uh -huh. don't know this, but we had at one time uh, five aircraft carriers stationed out there. Okay, so thousands and, were out there at one point yeah, working there was on a five daily of basis. Them and, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, and then they kept losing them, losing sure. them, losing them. We're down to none now. I don't have any, uh, but we do have a lot of other ships out there. And it just built up aircraft. Put a, they brought an air station out there, mm -hmm. and fighter planes, and then they had helicopters. And uh, of course, I was with tugboats, so I was distant from the air. Sure, but I knew what was going on because I used to have to go pick them up when they crashed out in the ocean. And we did that a lot. So, uh, and I'll just add, while the Navy maybe uh, uh, had a little bit of a rocky relationship with Elizabeth Stark and vice versa, Elizabeth Stark with the Navy, the Navy, of course, is a backbone to Jacksonville, Florida, mm -hmm. we all know. And Mrs. Stark sort of died penniless in an unmarked grave, but the Girl Scouts uh, did mark her grave because she had started the first Girl Scouts. Scout chapter here in Jacksonville, That's as it right. turns out. The Cherokee Rose. The Cherokee Rose chapter. And as we're wrapping up, these wonderful plants you have in here are the Kunti Palms. And the Seminole Indians made what out of these? Oh, well, the Seminole Indians uh, made, uh, dug these up and made bread out of the roots. And uh, it was called Seminole Bread. And you learned about this from Mrs. From Stark. Mrs. Stark. And I, I want to thank you for bringing them. They're just fascinating. And you grow these today and, and make them available to people. Yeah. Oh, I have these. I have thousands. I, I just have a hobby of a green finger. I don't really do a lot of selling or anything. Well, Joe, your books sound fascinating. You're a fascinating person. Thank you for capturing the story that might have been lost to Jacksonville, Florida and its beaches. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for being here, Joe Overby, and I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, and for now, time is up. If you need us, we're at www.jackshistory.com, the Jacksonville Historical Society, and we're out of here. We're history. Thank and you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you very much.